Hi everybody, Morzak EV here. Hope you're all doing really well. I thought I'd just take you through the DNO notification process. This involves notifying the people who actually distribute the electricity on the national grid to your house and is a requirement when installing electric vehicle charge points. It is also a requirement for the OLEV grant. As part of this, we'll cover a topic that can sometimes be a snagging point in delaying someone's charge point installation, and that is looped supplies. Roll the credits. Hello everybody and welcome to Morzak EV, a channel dedicated to all things electric vehicles, electric vehicle charging and all related technologies. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notifications of future videos and it does really help us. Thank you to everyone who's subscribed and liked the videos so far, we really appreciate it. So as I said at the beginning of the video, Part of the process of EV charge point installation is notifying your DNO, that's your district network operator. That's at least the case in the UK. One of the main reasons for this notification is so the national grid can gain an understanding of what infrastructure needs to be in place and where infrastructure needs to be grown and also making sure locally there's enough of a supply to make sure you don't get any kind of power cuts due to excess demand. So the DNO is not the same as your electricity supplier. You think of it like this, your electricity supplier is the people that own the electric and sell you the electric. The DNO are the people who own and maintain the cables in your area. So the National Grid own and run the whole network, but this is split up locally between different district network operators. So in the Midlands region, it's mostly Western Power. You can find a map of the different district network operators here. But also bear in mind that on some housing estates, you can have a very local DNO who owns a network for just that particular housing estate or street or even sometimes a little muse of a few houses. The only way to tell who owns your network is by looking at the MPAN number, which looks like this, on your electricity bill. And then looking at the table on the Energy Networks Association website and finding out who that DNO is. So the DNO is not like an electricity supplier. You can't change who your DNO is. So one of the only issues that we ever really come across on domestic properties when installing electric vehicle charge points is we do the notification and we're informed that the customer is on a looped supply. So a looped supply goes back to around the 1950s when two houses are fed from a single cable. So the cable comes from the main supply on the road into one house, not through the main fuse, but at the bottom of the fuse carrier and into the next house. Hopefully this diagram explains it. That means that one cable is carrying the load for two houses. Back then, it was okay. Most houses very rarely used above 30 or 40 amps total. So the cable being able to carry 80 or 100 amps could cope with that quite easily when both houses were at full load, say Christmas day. But as electricity usage has increased throughout the UK, and we have a lot more electric devices for doing things like showers, heating, the demand has increased and loop supplies have become a real issue. And they're kind of a sleeping time bomb on some houses. That's because your fuse might be a 60 amp fuse in two houses, but with house electrics being upgraded, you could be pulling up to 80 amps in each house, for example. Now, when electricians do work, they should be checking this, getting the fuse checked out, and getting it upgraded if necessary. However, this isn't really a general practice being carried out. 
That's because most electricians will look at the mains fuse of the house and assume it's 100 amps because it says 100 amps on it. However, installing electric vehicle charge points and notifying the DNOs, it's become clear that actually a lot of houses are only on a 60 or 80 amp fuse. And with electric vehicles and the way they draw a high current for a large period of time, this has started to become an issue. So it's something that electric vehicle charge point installers need to be aware of. We always notify the DNO and make sure that your house will be under your fuse limit. This can be done through various methods such as load management or if your general house usage isn't high anyway, let's say you have a gas cooker and you don't have an electric shower, then it's probably not a worry. But if you do have these items, we can do a calculation to work out how much you use it is. And with the charge point included, this might all need upgrading. In addition, most DNOs do not want a charge point on a looped supply. So getting the house fuse upgraded gives you future proofing. So we are covering load management in a separate video. I'll leave a link in the description below once we've done that and put a card up in the top right corner. So what can you as a customer do before getting quotes for electric vehicle charge points? Well, firstly, you can check your house to see if you have two incoming cables like this. If you have, you're almost certainly on a loop supply unless it's been rectified. If you're friendly with your neighbours, you can go around both your neighbours' houses and check if they have two incoming cables. If you don't have a double incomer and your neighbours don't, that means the likelihood is you're not on a loop supply and it's not something you need to worry about. We'll probably be able to get your fuse upgraded without too much work. If you are on a loop supply, you can begin the process yourself or you can make sure you engage a charge point installer well ahead of needing the charge point actually installed. Most DNOs will unloop your supply in a period of about one to two months. This can vary depending on the local conditions and what's going on. But I think the key to everything is planning ahead. If you can get a charge point installer engaged and get quotes a few months ahead of when you're thinking of buying an electric vehicle, hopefully it isn't an impulse purchase, then you shouldn't have any worries and everything should be sorted well ahead of the date. So I hope you found this video useful. Please give us a cheeky thumbs up on that like button. If you want to get information on more videos on electric vehicle charge points, Tesla videos and other related technologies, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And in the meantime, thank you very much for watching.